In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make an Unreal Engine 5 2D game. And in this case, it's a 2D platformer. You can use your own project or follow along with me. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.1.1. But if you have a later version, you can follow along as well. So let's go ahead and launch the engine. We're going to select games. And then I'm going to select blank because I want to teach you everything from scratch. So let's start from a blank project and build everything. Give your project a name. I called mine Platformer 2D. And if you have a starter content ticked, remove that. And with these settings, let's go ahead and create the project. If you're interested in in-depth game development courses, please visit my website, pixelhelmet.com, which you can also find in the description below. All right, so here we are. And to begin with, I'm going to click on the content drawer and then I'm clicking dock in layout. So I can have this browser down here all the times. It's easier for you to see. And I'm going to make a new folder down here. Go ahead and make a new folder, call it maps. And inside of this folder, let's right click and make a new level. So for this one, let's just call it map main. So this is the main map we're going to create our level in. So double click on this map main, click on save selected. And now we are ready to import the assets. So let's go ahead and make a new folder. Let's call it assets. And I'm going to make a new one called textures inside of this assets folder. So textures, and I'm going to go into this folder. Now the assets I'm using are these ones from, if you write itch.io, and inside of this website, you search for Oakwoods, or you can write this link. I'll have it in the description as well. So you can look in the description. I've already downloaded the assets here on my desktop. And for these assets, just go ahead and import them. You can click and drag into this textures folder that will automatically import the item. So go ahead and import the backgrounds as well. And I'll also import the character. And I'll also import the decorations. For the decorations, I'll just make a new folder in the engine before I do this. And here in the settings, I'll also make the thumbnail size small, so it's a lot better to see here. So right click and make a new folder. I'll call it decoration. And inside of this folder, I'm going to drag all of these decorations into that folder. All right, and before we can use all of these items, select everything. If, uh, you can do this by holding shift and then clicking on the last item that will select all in the row here. You can right click and say sprite actions and apply paper 2D settings. The reason we do this is if you click on this, for example, and you zoom in, you can see this doesn't look like Pixlot. This is very blurry and Pixlot needs to be very sharp. So what you can do here is you can right click, right action, supply paper 2D. And now you can see if I zoom in now, the pixels are as they should be. So remember to do this for Pixlot, select the background as well. And all of this you have imported the tile set, right click, sprite action, apply paper 2D settings. And if you go in there, you can see everything is looking sharp and nice. All right, so let's go ahead and make the tile set first. Right click on the tiles and go to sprite actions and create tile set. Now this tile set, I'm going to drag out of the textures folder. I'm dragging it into the assets folder. You can make your own folders as well if you want to be more organized. You can also rename them if you wish. Uh, I'm just doing it quick for this tutorial, but you can click on F2 and rename this. Usually, for example, for tile sets, I call them TS Oakwood, for example, then you know it's a tile set. Now for this tile set, also right click and create a tile map and then call this one TM for tile map Oakwood. Okay, so the difference between a tile set and a tile map. So here the tile set are your, you can imagine if you're a painter, you have your colors and you, ha you have your canvas. These are your, your colors. So these are the tiles you can paint with. And in the tile map, this is actually where you paint your tile. So this is where you build your level. So the tile set is simply just the tiles you can use to build the level. Okay, inside of the tile set, you have to define the tile size. You can see here when you click on one of them to view them, it doesn't really fit with this, uh, with this square and it has to fit for this tile. So the tile size is 24 pixels by 24 pixels. And you can know this by going to this guy's website here. You can see he made the pixel art 24 by 24. So this is why I'm setting it to 24 by 24. 
And when you click on the tiles, you can see now it fits perfectly. So let's close it down. And before we continue, I'm actually going to the textures folder again. And you have to create a tile set for these backgrounds as well. So we have created tile sets for these as well. Let's drag them out into the assets folder. And we don't really need to create a tile map again. We are going to use it inside of here. So now we have a tile sets here. And again, click on the first one. Remember to change the tile size to 24 by 24, just like before. And do the same thing for the other two backgrounds. So 24 by 24 and the third one, 24 by 24. Let's now open the tile map. And here we have to define the tiles again. It is 24 by 24. And now I have to define how large do you want your map to be. I'm going to make my map 30 tiles, so 30. And you can see here, this is the map that I have. And for the height, I'm just going to set it to 10. Now, when we are making those tile maps, I usually add more tiles because when your character is standing here, all of this area is empty in Unreal Engine. And I don't want the players to see this empty area because they can actually see this darkness here so I usually add more background tiles so they can't see them. So what I do is when I define my map width and height, I usually add 20 tiles on top of it. So I can say plus 20. And this is just for the left. And we can say plus 20 again. And this will be for the right. So we have filling tiles for the left and right. I'll do the same thing here for the height. I'll add 20 and then 20 again. So in tile maps, we paint in layers. So I'm going to click here and click F2 to rename this and call this the base layer. So I'll show you what layers are for now. Let's just paint. So what I will start doing is I'll add these filler tiles to begin with. So here you can see the tile set you are using. You can switch between tile sets later on when we make the background by clicking on this small icon. And you can see, you can see the backgrounds tile sets you have made as well. But let's start with the tiles here. I'm going to select this one, so clicking on it. And now you can see you can paint inside of here. So remember, my filler tiles are 20 tiles long. So I'm, I'll start here, and you can see the small number. It starts from zero. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen. It's very small. So starting from zero, and you can see it counts up. So here, starting from zero, I'm going 20 tiles up, 19. And so zero to 19, you can see that these are just fillers. And I'll do the same thing here for going upwards. So the tile index starts at 49 down here, and I'll go up to 230 because 49 and 230, it will be 20 tiles just like this. All right, so this is the last line over here. Okay, so we have 20 tiles counting here, 20 here, 20 here, 20 here. So these are the fillers. You can click on G or this paint bucket, and then you can just fill these areas in. And the main map is actually inside of here. So let's go ahead and create our map. I'll just create a very, very simple one. Uh, you can take these tiles over here and I'm just going to click on B and you can paint them. So painting here, here, just clicking on here and you can paint your own map. I mean, just go ahead and have fun with it. All right, now we have a complete map and let's now paint the background. Now let's go ahead and select one of the backgrounds. So the first one is this background here. So selecting it. Now to paint the background, you can just click and drag and select everything. Now this background is not really good in size because we are painting in 24 by 24 pixels, but somehow this background is actually not made for 24 by 24 pixels. So it's cutting a little bit, but it's okay in this example. I'm just going to showcase it to you and we're not really getting any bugs. But if you're making a background for your game, just make sure it's compatible with 24 by 24 pixels or however large your game is, maybe 32 by 32 pixels and just match the tiles you've already made. All right, so instead of painting this background here, you can see if I paint it, I delete my tiles that I've just made. And this is why we work in layers. So here for the layers, I'm going to add a new layer. And this one I'm going to call background. So clicking on background, click on this arrow down here and go ahead and paint. So I'm going to paint 
it here just like this. I'm also going to paint it a little bit here. You can see it cuts. So I'm just going to continue it a little bit. And now you can see we have a small bug here. And actually the artist haven't made tiles to put up here. So we have to make this a bit lower like the tiles. So going to the base and I'm going to take these and just put them down here instead. Okay, so now this is fixed. Now let's go ahead and select the second background and let me make another layer, background two, and we can put it beneath the background. Now select everything like before and paint on top of here. If you want to see better, you can disable this background by clicking on this eye. Just remember to click on background two before you paint again and go ahead and paint. Just pay attention to which, which layer you are painting in. All right, and now I am ready to paint the third background. Click on the plus, call this one background three and put it beneath background two. And now let's go ahead and select the third background, select everything, and you can paint it here again. And when it's filled, I'm going to enable both of them. And now we have this really nice looking level. And for the collision, I'm just going to increase it to 200. And this is because so the character can walk on the tiles and not fall through the ground. So let's uh, close it down. And now what we can do is for this tile map, we can click and drag it into the level. And here it is, very nice looking. Usually what I do is I click on it and I set the location to zero, zero, zero. So it's here. And this is what the level looks like. Now the lighting is off and we need to adjust this. All right, so let's now adjust the color and the lighting. So before we do this, go ahead to edit and project settings. And inside of here, search for anti-aliasing. And just make sure anti-aliasing method on your end is set to none because we don't need anti-aliasing when we do pixel art. So just make sure this is set to none on your end. Now let's go ahead and click on this button, go to visual effects and create a post process volume. So with this post process volume, let's go down to the bottom and select this called infinite extent to affect the whole level. And then up here, let's go to Bloom and set the intensity to zero. Let's go ahead to Exposure and set the maximum and minimum to two, like this. And then to the image effects, set the vignette to zero as well. Now down here in the color grading, click on the one called Highlights and set the highlights minimum to one and then go to miscellaneous and set the tone curve amount to zero. All right, so these are the general settings that apply for all games. Now it depends on which tiles you have selected, like the next part that we are going to do. But if you select this, the same tiles, I can show you my settings. However, you have to do your own settings depending on your own tiles for your game. But I will show you here what we do and how you can go about it. So right now you can see we are in the lit mode. If you go to the unlit mode, this is actually what the true pixel art color looks like. So if, if you click on the lit mode and you can do this by clicking Alt 4 and Alt 3. So clicking on Alt 4 to go to the lit mode, you can see it's very dark compared to the unlit mode. So the lit mode is very dark and we need what you need to do is the lit mode needs to be the same as the unlit mode. We have to have it looking like this. So going back to the lit mode, now we can click on this post process and to give it more light, we can go to color grading, go to global, and inside of here we have something called gain. So click on this gain and I'm going to add more gain to it until I'm satisfied. Okay, as I said, this part depends on which tile set you have selected. Now for this one here in the color grading in the global, the saturation I've set to 1.01. .01. Contrast 1.1, this is my gamma, this is my gain. And then I've set my shadow saturation, the contrast, the gamma, and the gain as well. So you have to work with these uh, sliders depending on which tiles you have. And then you can switch between the lit mode and the unlit mode. And if you think they are close enough, then we are ready to go. I think these are close enough. I could spend uh, two hours on this, three hours maybe of my day if this was a serious project. And I would spend a lot of time just to adjusting the colors to be correct. All right, so now we are ready to create the player. We're going to add decoration a little bit later on. So let's save everything for now. Let's now go to the content folder, right click, make a new folder called Blueprints. 
And let's go in here, let's right click, go to blueprint class, and instead of selecting a character here, let's click on all classes and here search for paper. And you can see this one paper character. Now for this one, let's call it BP player. So let's go in here. In the player here, if you click on the sprite, now we have to add the player. But before we can do this, let's extract it and make flipbooks. So let's go to textures. And this is where we save the player, this one character blue. So you can see it comes in a texture like this. So what we can do is right click, go to sprite actions, and then extract sprites. Now again, you can either go to the website and see what the artist has done here, like the sizes between these tiles. But what we can do is click here, grid, and then you have to specify the cell width and height so it fits every single character here. So you have to specify them here. I believe it was 56 by 56 for this character. So you can see each tile fits with one of these characters. And now what we can do is click on extract and all of these sprites will be available. Let's create flipbooks. So these are just still images. This is what a sprite is. It's just an image. And if you drag it here to the world and you place it here, for example, at the Y zero, you can see we have the character here, but it's just a still image. So we need to animate it. And this is what a flipbook is. So selecting this idle here from this frame to this frame, and you can right click and then click create flipbook. And let's call this one FP for flipbook, and I'm going to call it idle. Now you can see it's animated, and I'm going to drag it into the assets folder, so out of here. Let's do the same thing for the running. So I'm going to find the running, starts from here, and ends at around, I believe, here. So we can right click this and create flipbook, call it FP run. And let's get it out of here as well to the assets folder. And the last thing, I want the jumping as well. So selecting it from this one, and then it ends at this one here, I believe. So what we can do is we can right click, flip book, and we can call this one jump. And again, move it to the assets folder. And inside of here, now you can double click on one of the flip books, and you have to set how fast you want to run this flip book. Now, depending on what your artist again have done, for example, you can see if you set the frames per second to 10, it gets a lot slower. If you set it to 50, it, run, it runs a lot faster. So I'm going to set it to 12. Do it for the same thing for the other flipbooks. Click on it, set it to 12 frames per second, and this one, 12 frames per second. Okay, so now let's go back to the player. Let's click on Sprite, and now we can select our idle flipbook. Now we have it here. Okay, so what we can do now is click on this capsule component. We don't really need it to be that large. So I'm going to reduce the size of it. So 12 by 12. And then let's move our character up. It's a bit too much in the air. What you can do is you can go to the right view if you want to zoom in and just have your player here at around the center of it, just like this. And maybe also move it. This way, let us compile, go back to the perspective view. Now let us add a camera. So clicking on the capsule component, or just the player up here, click the add and search for a spring arm. Now the spring arm is just a holder for the camera. So clicking on the spring arm again, click here, search for camera, and we have it here. Now let's click on the spring arm and let's rotate it by clicking E on the keyboard. So, or you can select one of the tools up here. So this is the rotate tool. You now click and drag. And now we have the camera looking on the character like this, which is the correct, uh, correct angle. Now for this camera, since we are creating pixel art instead of perspective, we have to select orthographic. Let us close it down and let's see what happens. So before we can spawn the character inside of here, let's go to the blueprints folder, right click, make a blueprint class and make a game mode. Let's call it BP game mode. And the second thing we need to do is create a blueprint class. Go to player controller, name it BP player controller. Okay, so in the game mode, we have to set the default player controller to BP player controller, the one we just made. And the second one here for the default pawn, we're going to change it to BP player. Let's compile, let's close it down. And also here in the world settings, if you don't have this tab, you can always go up here in window and open the world settings. So inside of here for the game mode override, you have to select the game mode you just made. And now inside of this level, we have to click up here 
and go to basic and have this player start so we can actually spawn somewhere in the world. Now click on details. So for this player start, the Y needs to be zero. And if you look, click on G, you can see the icons here. So this is where the player starts. And I just make this smaller to visually see it better. So here in the scale, I'm going to make it 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and just have it up here. Okay, so now let's click on play. And now you can see the player spawns, but we actually fall through the ground. We can, you can see we're all the way down up here. So what we need to do is add collision before the player can walk on the tiles. So the way we do this is we can go back to assets and here in the tile set. So clicking on the tile set. Now we have some collision data here. You can click on one of the tiles you want collision on, and then you can click add box. Now you can see nothing happened here. This is because you have to click on this colliding tile so you can see where the collision has been applied. Now you have to set collision for all of the tiles you don't want the player to go through. So this one, for example, this one, this one here, this one here. And I also use this for the wall. So I'm also going to add collisions on these here. And I believe I also used these ones down here. So whatever you have used, whatever you, you want collision on and don't want the players to fall through, you have to set collision for that. So this one, I believe, as well, and this one as well. You can always add more collision if we have used more tiles, but realistically, you also want to add a collision on all of those tiles, but we haven't really used them right now, so you can go through them on your own tiles. Okay, so now before it works, you have to click on Refresh Map, else it will not work. So refresh the maps you've already made. Click on Save. Now let's close it down and click on Play. And now you can see our player is standing on the ground. If your player is floating, you have to go to the blueprints player and in the viewport, and you have to adjust this uh, collision capsule here. You have to adjust it if your player is floating. But now you can see the player is on the ground. Before we do anything, I'll show you how to add decoration to your level. So go to decoration. And inside of here, remember again, you have to click on apply to the paper 2d settings if you haven't done so now before we can add them to the level you can see we can't really drag it into here the thing you need to do is you need to right click sprite actions and create sprite remember sprite is just a still image we can use to build our level in pixel art i'm just going to make the camera speed a little bit slower here so now you can drag this image into your level set the y to zero if you set it to zero it's in front of the tile like this if you set it to minus one in the y then it's behind the tile just like that and you can try to put it anywhere in your level you can click on play and you can see what it looks like you can even take those rocks here right click create sprites and then drag this into the level set the y to minus one and then drag it here maybe this one instead of minus one you can have it to one if you set it to one then the player will actually run in front of it okay so you can go ahead and add decoration as you wish you can add grass you can add all of these items you can even add this shop again this is an animated shop here so what you can do again just like i told you before you can right click sprite action extract sprites and then make a flip book which you just can place inside of here. All right, so now I've went ahead and just added some decoration items. So this is what my level currently looks like. So go ahead and add your decoration if you want to. And let's move on to creating the movement. So I'm going to go back to the player. And before we actually do this, let's right click here, go to inputs and create this input mapping context. And I'm going to call it IMC default. Now let's right click again and go to input and add an input action. So in the input action, I'm going to call this one movement. And here, let's click on this mapping context, go to the mapping and then add the movement. So for this movement here, we only need in the value type for the input action, this value type, we need to change it to an axis 1D. Now, if, if it was a 3D game, we change it to 2D, but since it's a platform or a pixel art game, Let's change it to 1D. Let's go to the mapping contest. And inside of here, I'm going to click on this keyboard icon and click on D to move to the right. So this is my move it to the right button. Now I can click on the plus up here again and click on this keyboard icon, click on A to assign it here. And this is how I move to the left. 
And here in the in the modifiers, I'm going to click on the plus and say negate. And this just means it goes to the negative value of the D, which means this one's moved to the right and this one moves to the left because I just invert the movement. Now let's save everything. Let's go to the player. And inside of here, let's go to the event graph where we can write the code. I'm going to delete these, but here in the begin play, now we can right click here and say get controller. So we're trying to get the controller for this, this character here. And now we need to specify what controller are we talking about. The controller we're talking about is simply this player controller we made. So this is called casting. So I'm saying cast to, and then we need to write the name of the controller, PP player controller. Now let's connect it. And from here, let's drag and say enhanced input. So this subsystem here. And now we can say add mapping context. Now this the mapping context is simply this one that we just made. So we're going to add it here so it works on our character. So selecting it here and now it works. So let's add the movement. Let's now right click and say IA movement. And the IA movement, this event here, is simply the input action we actually made down here. Remember, we made it by right clicking, going to input and creating this input action here. So creating this event, now we can add some movement to the player. For the movement, we can simply right click and say, get actor forward vector. So we're getting the forward direction for this player. And we can say, add movement input. Very, very simple. So adding the movement input here, and now, then this action value have to be connected with this scale value. Now you can click on play and see what happens. So if you click on play and now you can walk to the right, you can see this is working correct. And if you walk to the left, this is working correct as well. So walking to the left is correct because remember we set the mod modifier in the mapping context, which was negate, which just inverts the right movement. So now we can move to the right and left and I can see I have collision problems with some of my assets. So I'm going to select all of the things in my level that I don't want to have collision on. And then I'm going to say no here, no collision again, and don't generate any overlap events. And if I click on play, everything is working correctly again. All right, so let's actually add animation to the character. So let's go back to the player. And here for the movement, let's take this sprite and you can drag it into here. And from here you can say set flipbook. So we want to change the flipbook when we are moving. And what we want to change it to is the run flipbook. So this one here. Now we need to change it back again. You can see here if I keep running, I need to change it back again. So I need to be idle when I stop moving. So what I need to do is here in the complete, again, copy this down here and say idle. So you can see here if I run, I run. And if I stop, I idle. Now we need to set the correct direction for the player. So what we need to do is check if this action value is above zero or not, because if we run to the left, it's zero or it's minus actually. And if we run to the right, it's positive. So here we can say, is this one a greater than zero? And what we can do is we can drag from here and write branch and select this branch. Now we're checking, is this value above or below zero? If it's above zero, we can take this sprite here and we can simply just set the rotation. So set world rotation for this sprite. So we're setting the rotation to 000, which basically is what it is right now. And here, if it's below zero, we want to turn the character. And you can see here, if you click on anything in the world and you select the rotation tool, this blue down here, this is the Z axis. So you need to turn the player 90 or minus 180 degrees in the z-axis. So I'm going to take it minus 180 degrees. We're going to rotate the sprite if we're running the other way. So let's now click on play and see what happens. If we run to the right, run to the left, you can now see everything is looking correct. You can see sometimes when I run, there is a small jitter in the pixel art. And if your pixel art is jittering as well, a very, very good practice is to go to the assets, go to the tile set, Right click condition tile sheet texture, and this adds a buffer around your tiles so they don't jitter. So do this for all of the tile sets here. This one condition tile sheet texture, this one here as well, and the last one 
condition tile sheet texture. Now they don't jitter, we have added a buffer between all of the tiles. And now let's add a jump for the player. So let's go back to blueprints, right click, input, and create another input action. I'm going to call this one jump. Now let's go to the mapping context. And inside of the mapping context, let's add the mapping, select the jump here. And I'm going to click on the keyboard here and click on space on my keyboard to assign the space bar. And in the triggers, I'm going to add this one called pressed because I don't want my code to run all the time. I only want to run it once when I click on space bar and it jumps. Now let's go back to the player and down here, let's right click and say IA jump and go up here and select this event up here. Very, very simple. You can drag from here and say jump and the player will automatically jump. Now for the sprite, we also need to set the sprite. So let's take this sprite here and set the flipbook. And you can say set flipbook. And you can set it to this jumping one here. So connect it here. And I don't want the jumping animation to loop. So what I want to do here in the sprite, I actually want to drag from here and say set looping. So I don't want the jump animation to loop like the running. So I'm going to disable the looping for now. And then I'm going to play this flipbook. And then I'm going to right click here and say get velocity. Now here with this velocity, I can drag from here and say break. Or if you don't want to break the vector, you can also take this and right click and say split struct pin. That's the same thing. But I usually just drag from here and write break vector. So you can see the X, Y, and Z from the vector. Because right now we need the Z value. What I'm trying to do is when the player is jumping here, the Z value will change. You can see here, if you click on one of the items, this blue arrow is the, is the Z axis. So if the player is jumping, the Z axis for the player is changing. So we're trying to get the velocity for the Z axis. And when the player is not jumping anymore, I want to loop it again and play the idle flipbook. So drag from here and say, is this equal to zero? Which means the player is standing on the ground and not jumping anymore right from here and write a branch and let's connect it. So if this is true, we can go ahead and take from here and say set looping to be true again. Now for the looping to work, you can't just disable it and enable it like this. You actually also have to drag from here and say play. So remember to use this play as well, else it will not be working. And if you want to be more structured, double click on this line here, go down and just Make some pins here, make a nice line, disconnect it here, connect it here instead, and try to be more organized with the code so it doesn't look messy. So I'm just going to organize it a little bit. And now over here, we can drag from here and say set flip book. Now we're going to set the flip book back to idle, just like this. All right, so over here for the velocity, it's actually going to be zero uh, right when we jump. So it's actually going to be true right before we jump. So I need to give it a small delay. I'm going to write delay and just delay it by 0.1 second, just a very, very small delay. So it gets the a chance to jump before it calculates. And then I'm going to create a Boolean called jump so we, that we can use up here because we don't want to run this code if we are jumping. So let me go ahead and create a Boolean called is jumping. Let's take this Boolean, drag it out here and set it. So over here, when we click on jump, we are going to jump. And when we go over here at the end, we're going to set this jump to false so we can jump again. So over here, I don't want to spam jump. I don't want to jump all the time. So I'm going to drag this Boolean, write a branch and just make sure I'm not already in the jumps before I jump again. So over here, if you are jumping, you cannot do anything. However, if you're not jumping, then you can go ahead and jump. So what we can do up here in this code, we can take this is jumping and I'm just going to push this code a little bit here to the right. And what we can do with this is again, write a branch. If we are jumping, I don't want to do anything. However, if we are not jumping, I want to run normally like this. And the same thing down here, copy paste it when it's complete. If you are not jumping, you want to set it to idle. If you are jumping, don't do anything. All right, so before I forget down here, we are checking the velocity for the set value if it's zero or not. So if it's not zero here, means the player is in the air. 
And we don't want to stop the code here. We need to recheck if the player is landing on the ground. And the, when the player lands, we want to run this code. So here, if the player is in the air, meaning this is not equal to zero, we want to delay the code here by maybe 0 0.1, something very small. And then we want, when it's complete, we want to rerun the code. We need to continuously check if the player has landed on the ground, else the, the code will stop here and not work. So let's uh, see if we have any bugs. Let's go ahead and click on play. Let's run and jump. And everything's looking fine. And if you want to zoom out with the camera, you can go back to the player. You can click on the camera and you have something called ortho width. So you can set it to something like 700, for example, and you can click on play and you can see the camera is further away than before. All right. So that was it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it making it with you and like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content. And I'll make sure to release more and more tutorials to help you out with game development. Also, make sure to check out pixelhelmet.com if you need any game development courses. There are free courses as well. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.